Hi everyone, we're ready for a Cornerstone Family midweek update and word of encouragement that I, I hope the Lord will use to uh, lift up your hearts today. We um, have been meeting in the last several days to uh, put our heads together and come up with a reopened plan. When I say we, I'm talking about the elders, I'm talking about the staff, I'm talking about some other um, other folks that we've uh, included and invited to help us discern how to best move forward. When it comes to when we will reopen, we're waiting on uh, Madison as the Supreme Court decides, the state Supreme Court decides uh, what they're going to direct the legislature and the governor to do. When that uh, decision comes out, uh, I'm assuming that the governor and the legislature are going to meet and they'll, they're going to have about a week to come up with a plan. When they come up with that plan, that's when we'll have a better idea of when our reopen will take place. But when it does, most likely they will ask us to have a smaller uh, gathering than what we're uh, normally accustomed to. So what we uh, are planning to do and what you can expect is uh, we'll have two services. We'll use both, both the first floor and the second floor so that we'll have uh, smaller groups in both locations and uh, two different time periods. We very likely will have a special uh, service. One of those two service times will be reserved for those uh, who are 60 and, and older and also those with immune conditions that are compromising their immune systems. So we're going to move forward in a careful way and uh, we'll give you all those details uh, as they become um, refined and, and finalized and as we know when the, that opening date is. We will also do live streaming. We're working on uh, purchasing equipment and getting a team in place to live stream. In addition, when it comes to ministry teams, we're also formulating at this time a reopen task force so they uh, we have uh, personnel to to manage the reopen and all the different pieces that are going to go into that. I hope that all uh, makes sense. I hope that's helpful to know. We don't know when and we're in a waiting time now. Uh, and I think of what God says uh, in his word often to his people when it comes to waiting. Here's the thing we should remember when we're waiting on God. God is never in a hurry and he's never late. He is never in a hurry, he's never late. He's always, in fact, on time. We see this in the uh, life of Jesus. Uh, people asked him, would you come, Lord, and would you help in, in the case of Jairus, the synagogue ruler who had a daughter who was ill. Jesus was on his way, and uh, but there was a delay. And yet, when Jesus got there, it was in uh, perfect timing. Uh, same with Lazarus. Martha and Mary asked Jesus, please come. We need you to come. And there was another several day delay. And yet it, when Jesus arrived, it was perfect timing. In the same way, we will reopen and it'll be in God's perfect timing. I'm so glad that he reassures us. In fact, he encourages us to, to wait on him. And here's what we read in the book of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. The Lord is my portion and my soul says, therefore I will hope in him. And then we read this, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks and waits on him. And so uh, the Lord knew we needed that reassurance and he's given it to us. I'd like to pray now the 714 uh, prayer, the Unite 714 prayer that churches all over the world are praying. Every week we receive a new prayer so that we can pray in one accord with one voice all over the world. I'd like to pray that and then I'll pray um, our own cornerstone prayer. And this is the prayer for this week, the Unite 714 prayer. Week 8 uh, during this Corona season. We humbly come before you, Lord. We come before you in confidence, knowing you are a merciful Father and a loving uh, Father who hears our prayers from heaven. We unite before you as the Church, capital C. In the midst of this pandemic, we bring you our sacrifice of praise. We thank you for mitigating the effects of COVID-19. We realize that without your divine intervention and protection, the devastation wrought by this disease would be far greater. And we are thankful today that 
What is impossible with man is possible with you. In the face of pressure and pain, we choose to look beyond our circumstance and lift our hands to you. Comfort us in our weakness. Lift us up in your presence as we worship your holy name. Because today, Lord, we choose to praise you. Today, we choose to praise you. This we pray and commit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we continue to pray and pray our own cornerstone prayer, here's what I encourage you to pray. We included it in last week's update, and I'd like to continue to come back to these prayer requests. Preparing to come back stronger, we pray for grace to look to the Lord for peace, strength, and answers. We pray for those struggling with the weightiness of these times. We pray for the ill and recovering and those who are providing their care. We pray for reopening decisions in our reopening task force, and we pray for a spirit of discernment and wisdom and patience. Thank you, Jesus, for being a Lord, our God who is large and in charge. We pray this in your name. Amen. Church family, have a great rest of this week. Uh, I'll see you on Sunday for the last part of our current series where we're going to turn our attention to the topic of love. God bless you. Have a great day.